Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. So today I am deciding to try something different. I'm doing a day in the life video. Um, and so I feel like I'm gonna just change my channel to be more like a day in the life type channel where I do day in the life vlog vlogs and then I just talk um, over the like video and kind of give you an update that way. Cause I just feel like it's more fun to <laughs> for me personally. <laughs> Um, it's like a fun little hobby and also I think it's probably more interesting to actually see what my day looks like rather than me just talking about it and then also just giving you updates then because doing these updates videos is kind of just like dry right like it just makes me feel bored so that being said let's get into this my day in the life video of 6 30 to 6 30. So, hello, hello, good morning. It is about 6.30, and the first thing I do in the morning is I, so I'm, I'm recording this while my son is next to me and he's kicking my computer. But anyway, um, the first thing that I usually do in the morning is I get my daughter's uh, breakfast together. Sometimes I'm pumping while I'm doing this. Sometimes I pump first. It depends on when she gets up. This day, I believe, I got up before her but like only by a few minutes like she was up before I even had a chance to put my pump on so I just said okay I'll just go get her I'll make her breakfast and that's how it usually goes she gets up anywhere from 6 30 to 7 um, but she was getting up at 8 and she was getting up at 7 so no matter like what time we put her to bed she just seems to be an early riser um, and she does get a nap every day and then I'm taking my dog out. That's another thing that I do in the morning. I usually leave her out there for a couple hours in the morning just so that she can run around and stretch and whatever it is that dogs do out there. And I just give her some food and water. Um, so yeah, like what I was saying, I'm an exclusive pumper, so basically I don't breast, I don't nurse, but I do breastfeed um, by pumping. And so that's what I mean when I say like sometimes I'm pumping, sometimes I'm not. This day I was not pumping while I was doing all this, but some days I actually do have to pump while doing this and I do wait to take my dog out at that point because it's just too hard to like do what I'm doing here, which is getting her water and uh, have my big pump around and stuff. So and that's what's happening. So yeah, now I my daughter's downstairs, she's eating her breakfast, and I am hooking up my breast pump. Um, I use a Spectra S1, I think it's called, and it's basically, it's the portable pump, but it's like a hospital grade portable pump, and it's my favorite pump. I exclusively pumped with my daughter, and I am exclusively pumping with my son as well. And I do that because of my elastic nipples. <laughs> um, my left nipple is pretty damaged because of nursing my daughter. And I had a lot of issues with pain and like there's there's just skin missing now and stuff. So I was like, I'm not, I'm just gonna go to pumping. I did nurse my, I nursed my daughter for probably about two months on and off between pumping and nursing. And then with my son, I only nursed him for like two days just to get my milk to come in and to get it flowing and everything um, and then I I started pumping after that and I've been pumping ever since he is almost four months old he's like past three and a half months now so I've been doing it for that long and I pumped I exclusively pumped for a year with my daughter and so I plan to do that again this time um, hopefully I can get to two years maybe but I I don't plan to pump for the whole two years I hope that I have enough milk saved to get him to two years old uh, but who knows we'll see what happens <laughs> so usually I get like about anywhere from 14 to 17 ounces in the morning for my morning pump because I don't pump overnight anymore so my mornings I, pump, I have a lot of milk usually and so here I am just like trying to figure out how much to put in the refrigerator, how much to you know feed them, whatever. Newborns are always like changing what they need, right? Like as they grow they need more milk and he drinks probably like in the mornings he drinks six ounces. Um, he still gets up for, his five, for feeding at 5 a.m. Uh, or 4.30. 
and so I feed him that and then he wakes up later on in the morning and I give him six ounces um, here I am just like filling up a second bottle because that 5 a.m. feeding I get from the refrigerator and so I'm just replacing that milk and putting this bottle in the refrigerator and then the excess milk is going into like a little storage uh, container like a Medela storage bottle that I have and I just keep that in the refrigerator for the day um, or for a couple days and then I eventually will freeze that if I don't use it because like I said so he he's growing and he drinks more milk as he grows my daughter like she she only went up to five ounces for her feedings and that sustained her and with my son he is like nope that's not enough so I give him seven ounces at night before he goes to bed and then six ounces in the morning and yeah yeah and then five and a half ounces throughout the day but I was just showing you right there that like I use coconut oil on my nipple the one that's damaged from <laughs> when I nursed my daughter and I use like a bottle cap sometimes like a, like a baby bottle cap to put in my bra so that my nipple doesn't like chafe or rub against the fabric of my bra so that's basically what I was showing you there <laughs> now I'm getting my breakfast together and I usually just eat oatmeal in the morning and I my daughter usually eats oatmeal in the morning too with a banana but I just eat oatmeal <laughs> and while I eat I usually listen to a podcast or a couple podcasts I listen to a devotion and I listen to a sermon and I found that those two things just really get me in a good mindset to start my day I started doing that when I was pregnant with my son because I just you know when you're pregnant like for me I just get very emotional um, and cranky and stuff so it gets me in like and also I had I think I told you guys I was talking about my horrible job that I had previously <laughs> and I had to get myself in a good mindset to work at that place and so I started getting into the habit of listening to a devotion and um, a sermon and that really helped me to get myself Christ-centered and like my spirit focused on that rather than what's going on in my physical reality um, and how to use like the spirit in my physical reality you know I'm demonstrating for you how novice I am at day in the life videos because I'm not even in the shot <laughs> I'm trying to show you what I do in the morning is very basic I brush my teeth, I wash my face, I use um, that Derma E stuff, like vitamin C stuff. It helps my skin like just feel more glowy, I guess. I notice a difference, like I don't look so dead when I, when I wear them. <laughs> In here I'm just using uh, melanin uh, oil or whatever on my hands while I take out my braids. So like I had washed my hair a couple days ago and then I sat on the dryer for like two hours like on and off for two hours obviously I can't sit still for two hours I have two kids but um, <laughs> on and off for two hours and my hair was still wet so I was like I'm just gonna leave them in braids for another day and I did and so now I'm taking them out um, and this is just my braid out you know basically what I'm doing uh, I just put oil on my hands to prevent it from getting too frizzy while I manipulate my hair and here I'm trying to figure out how to now style it because I didn't like how it looked. <laughs> I didn't like day one hair, but day two it looked really, really cute. Um, but day one was like, oh, it's like flat, it's too, it's not long enough, like it's like there's shrinkage going on, there's just a lot. So, but I didn't have too much time to deal with it. <laughs> so, I was just like, whatever, I'll just do this and move on with my day. I don't wear makeup most days unless I have clients um, and I think I had one client this day but it was a virtual meeting later in my day and I just was like I don't want to wear makeup all day long for one virtual meeting so I didn't um, and I'm showing you this is my daughter's play area um, I have I bought her a trampoline for her birthday last this year this year and <laughs> I wanted to tell you that I love that book okay and yeah I was just I spend like about an hour playing with her at her play area before my son gets up if I can or I'll sit on the couch and I'll play all like bring me a toy and she'll like come over and you know 
play with me on the couch because I'd be too tired to move. <laughs> and I'm just straightening up our living room situation. Why do I have blankets on my couch is because my daughter's potty training. And I mean, do I need to elaborate on that? And that's one of the reasons why there was no couch like cover on that cushion. Actually, that time she threw up on that on that cushion cover. That's why I'd washed it. But usually when there's no cover on the cushion, it's because I had to wash the cover because she she peed on it. <laughs> so that's always fun times. And here I'm showing you it's time for me to pump again. So I have my Spectra S9 pump that I use throughout the day while I'm doing things because I just don't have the time to sit every single time. I like to use my Spectra S1 in the morning and at night before I go to bed because then I mean I usually have time to sit around and it's a hospital grade pump so I just feel like maybe you know it'll get more milk out and things like that although the Spectra S9 is really good I don't, actually don't really notice much of a difference if any difference at all in the output between the two pumps so it's a good pump and if you're asking well, why don't you use the Kara cups with that because I have elastic nipples and it doesn't work for me <laughs> I have to use these regular things with um, the pump and pal flanges so that's what works for me and I was just showing you that I have cloth wipes so I use cloth diapers and I use cloth wipes and I made videos before about my cloth diaper like washing routine um, it's basically the same change a little bit but it's basically the same and um, I use cloth wipes now I didn't use it with my daughter but I use it with my son because I calculated that I spent over a thousand dollars on wipes in the time that she was in diapers and I was like wow so, so I was like let me try cloth wipes and I love them so much they're so much better than disposable wipes like I only have to use one or two to get his butt clean and then it's cleaner than it would have been with you know regular wipes um, because I've used like regular wipes on him and I have to end up using like five or six. With these I only use two. And then I get to wash them and reuse them so I'm saving so much money because I'm not constantly buying wipes. And it's so easy. I mean I use it on my daughter if she has like an accident as well. So yeah, I'm saving lots of money. <laughs> my daughter's moving the camera. <laughs> So I was checking my emails for work. Um, if you don't know, I have a private practice. I'm a therapist. I should have probably started with that maybe. I don't know. Uh, I'm a therapist <laughs> um, and I also have a, a PhD in industrial organizational psychology. And I guess I kind of use that and the fact that I am an entrepreneur, but realistically, I don't, I mean, I don't use it in, in the terms of like working for somebody. Um, so anyways. I was showing you that like at night I use a cooler for that 5 a.m. bottle because I'm not going all the way downstairs to pick up a bottle out of the refrigerator. So, so I keep that bottle in a cooler overnight. I use it on him at 5 a.m. and then I unload it um, in the morning. I un unload like ice packs and put them in the freezer. But here I'm just preparing to go to the park. So after I do all this I also I go back to checking on some work stuff. I think I had to send some emails that day and then I just started packing up for the park so you saw me pack up some cloth wipes some cloth diapers um, I am putting sunscreen on everybody including myself that's a mineral sunscreen that I put on my face and on my son because I don't want to put him put the regular sunscreen on him yet he's just a baby but a newborn so I want to let you enjoy this <laughs> The sounds of the park, I just love it. The sounds of kids playing and just the outdoors, it's beautiful. Okay, so usually we go to the park every day for about an hour 
if we can't get to the park we'll go to the library or we'll go to like a play area like an indoor play area if it's raining or something sometimes we'll just stay home if i don't feel like going anywhere really <laughs> um and here i'm just getting everybody some lunch this is the most chaotic part of my day honestly because getting back from the park Usually I have to put my daughter on the potty, wash her hands, give her lunch, her milk, um, get myself hydrated, <laughs> pump, feed my son, change his diaper, and eat lunch for myself as well. All, all at the same time, all at once. It's a lot. So that day it wasn't that stressful, but a lot of times it's like chaos. Oh, so I was talking to you guys about my cloth wipes and cloth diapers. So I calculated that I had saved over $2,000 cloth diapering with my daughter when she was in diapers. And um, so this time around, I anticipate that we'll save around $4,000 because I didn't have to buy any new diapers for him um, because I used my daughter's old diapers and I have cloth wipes now, so I won't be doing that. So that's another $1,000 right there. So I think that we'll probably save around 4,000, but that was before inflation. I did those calculations before inflation. So, so it's probably even more now that we'll be saving. So yeah, I thought if you think that cloth diapering or cloth wipes is gross or hard or whatever, it's really not that hard. It's not hard at all. Like it's, I mean, it's not hard <laughs> and if you think I'm too busy for that honey look I was doing like a full-time job and it wasn't I mean I had to buy more diapers actually because I didn't have time to wash the diapers every other day or every two days um, so I had to buy more diapers but I would wash them once a week and that worked so I'm just saying like I don't recommend doing that though because I did read that like the that the urine soaked diapers will um, change like something with the diapers and it can cause like chemical rash on your baby so don't do that don't do what I did the first time around but <laughs> this time around I wash diapers every three days and that seems to be good and I think that I would be able to do that if I still had a traditional 40 hour a week job um, and I was still working for someone else. I think I would still be able to do that. It's really not hard. It's not hard at all. It takes maybe five, 10 minutes of your day. It's not hard. You can do it at the end of the night before you go to bed. Switch them over in the morning, super easy. So here I am just freezing some milk. Um, I usually go into my refrigerator and get any milk that has been there for a couple days and then I'll freeze it in the upstairs freezer and I'll um, put them in a gallon sized Ziploc bags like that. And then once those bags are full, I put them in the deep freezer. So that's what I'm showing you. I'm showing you the milk that I have frozen in these last three months, um, the excess milk. I, I do save a lot less milk than I used to because, am I not, ta oh my gosh. Hold on a second. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness. I thought I wasn't recording anything of that I just said, okay. So, <laughs> I am though. Um, anyways, what was I saying? Anyways, I don't know. But yeah, here I am. I'm just looking at my emails, I think again. I think I'm doing progress notes. Yeah, I must be working on some charts because I am angled my camera a certain way so that you can't see my screen. So I am uh, doing some charting here. And basically, my rule of thumb is that I try and get my progress notes done within 24 hours a lot of people have a hard time keeping up with their progress notes i highly recommend you do them within 24 hours sometimes i do them between sessions like if i have a session that ended at five at, at whatever <laughs> i'm trying to think of like what session times i have if i have a session that ended at 6 15 and i have a client at 6 30 i'm going to use that 15 minutes to do a progress note real quick and then i'm going to welcome my next client in and then I am going to meet with them and then I'm going to either do that documentation right then or I'm going to do it tomorrow in the morning or afternoon but I try and get that done within 24 hours um the place that I'm contracted with they want your progress notes done within 48 hours so I meet that just obviously um if you're not sure like how it works with contract um work when you're a therapist um First of all, I have a private practice and you don't have to have an LLC or a private practice to contract with somebody. You can just do it on your own. 
Um, you don't have to have like an established LLC with the state, but I do because my goal is to eventually have enough clients on my own to where I don't have to do contract work for somebody else. But for now, um, that's what I, I do. And so um, the place, yeah, so I'm saying the place that I'm contracted with, they require 48 hours. Um, that you do it within 48 hours. And so what I do is I see their clients, um, I send an invoice every week, and then they pay me once a month for the clients, for the sessions that I did. And we have contracts with the state, so I'm able to see um, some pretty severe clients that really need help, which I really like, uh, because that's why, I, that's why you do this work, right? To really help people that really need it. And so I have con we have contracts with the state, and so we get a lot of referrals, and so they're constantly contracting new therapists, and I really like it. It's a black-owned private practice, and it's just really cool to be part of something that, you know, I just never have worked with, you know, another business owner that was black. I never worked for another black person before, I don't think. I think all my bosses have always been white or Hispanic. I don't ever think that I ever had a black boss. So um, it's nice to have like somebody, and she's not technically my boss, like I said, um, it's private contractor work, but it is her private practice. So in that sense, like I have to follow her rules and things like that. So in that sense, she is my boss. <laughs> um, but in the reality sense, she's not because we're, she contracted with my private practice for me to do therapy work for her private practice. So. It's pretty cool. I love this field because it's so flexible. I mean, like, where else can you... I'm cooking dinner for my family right now, and it's like, I think it's 3.30 or 4 o'clock or something like that. I think it's 4 o'clock, 4.30 here. Um, <laughs> and you can't really do that in the, the middle of your work day when you're working a 9 to 5, you know? So I like that I'm able to do that. I can't take my daughter... couldn't take my daughter to the park in my last job. I was a therapist for a nonprofit. Um, in my last job, I couldn't take her to the park. I couldn't do those things. Like now, I can. I have the freedom, and so it is really, really nice. Um, and to be able to get clients so quickly has been a blessing as well. Because I really was nervous about that. But my advice to you is, if you're trying to get into private practice therapy work, I highly suggest that you get into contract work first. And I think a lot of people do this. Get into contract work while you're building your practice. And don't sign any non-compete disclosure agreements like I did the first time. Like my first job out of graduate school, I did. And everybody says don't do that. And I didn't know that yet because I was a novice therapist. But my advice to you is don't do that because it does limit your ability to do things like that, to like grow your own practice and um, work multiple jobs if you want to and things like that. Like. I just don't like those things because it keeps you chained to, to a job and that's not it's not right because as therapists we don't even make that much in the first place so, so especially when you're first starting out you do not make that much as a QTT and so with QTT is a qualified treatment trainee if you didn't know that but anyway so yeah being able to like have multiple contracts going on is good being able to have a contract and maybe work part-time somewhere else is good just do what you need to do to provide for your family, provide for yourself and everything and take care of yourself. I found a really good balance here. And so, and as you grow, like as your, your needs grow, uh, as you grow, your needs grow. So when I first started out, I had no kids. And so I could work two, three jobs, which is what I was doing. And I was in graduate school at the same time, um, doing my clinicals. But now I'm like, heck no, I'm not doing that. So I just have this contract and I'm focusing on growing my private practice. And that is good enough for me right now. So here I made some steaks and um, green beans and potatoes. And now I have a therapy session. Hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.